Hey guys, it's Dave Marshall with the RC Air Marshall YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, today we're going to be doing a uh, long-term review of a couple of planes that uh, I've had for a couple of months. What has to be two of the hottest selling uh, 64 millimeter EDFs on the market right now. The uh, E-Flight 64 millimeter F-15 and the E-Flight 64 millimeter F-16. These are two great birds. Um, and we'll talk about each of them. Pros, cons, uh, what I've learned about them, what I like about them, what I don't like about them. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So first we'll talk about the F-16. So let me get things kind of set back. So what we have here this is the E-Flight 64mm F-16. Uh, first, we'll go over a couple of the common traits between the F-15 and the F-16. Uh, both of them are equipped with 3150KV, 64mm, uh, 11 blade uh, outrunner uh, power units. I believe they have a, um, I believe it's either a 35 or a 40 amp ESC. I'll, uh, make sure of that and get back to you guys on it. <clears throat> Let me see if I can see it through the, the bottom of the F-15 here. Yep, it looks like they're 40, 40 amp ESCs. All right, so the, uh, both the F-15 and the F-16 are simple three channel uh, models. Uh, they've got your throttle, aileron and elevator controls. There are no rudders on, um, on either one of the models. Uh, both of them uh, will fly on 2200 uh, 4S batteries. I use uh, 2200 4S uh, 45C packs in mine and they run great. They give you about three minutes of flight time uh, under, under power the whole time. Uh, usually when I'm flying, uh, unless, unless something bad happens, I'm usually flying, um, you know, at full throttle the whole time. They're uh, they're fairly quick. They're not like super fast, but uh, you know they'll they'll get up and go. Uh, both models, uh, both of these, uh, are equipped with. Uh, these are the bind and fly uh, versions of the model, so they are equipped with uh, the AR six three six. Um, I believe these are the B variant, the AR-636Bs, um, yep, from, uh, from Spectrum, and they have safe select in them, and, uh, and that's optional, you know, if you want to bind it with safe select, you can, if you don't, you don't have to, uh, but they always have AS3X, and I'll tell you, uh, for both of these models, uh, AS3X makes a huge difference, uh, these guys, uh, fly fantastic in no wind. They fly fantastic in high winds. Uh, these things just really hold their own and fly great. Um, so specifically with the F-16, and and this is going to be kind of a con for both models. So we won't, uh, you know, uh, you know, we're still we're still kind of talking both of them, as you see. And I kind of did this on purpose. The last time I took this out. The tip of the nose broke off and uh, you know I don't know if you can see it in the video or what uh, there's several <laughs> several break zones um, you know where the the tip of the nose has fallen off on multiple occasions and it always falls off somewhere other than the last glue joint so I have the uh, you know the tip just stuck here in the battery compartment and I'll need to glue that back on you know at some point they're easy enough to glue back on but it's kind of a pain in the butt, you know, and I don't know if the, uh, the foam that's in the tips of these 64 millimeter models, now these are, are both, um, you know, kind of uh, revamped versions of old uh, FMS models, old FMS 64 millimeters. And, uh, you know, the foam that the, that the nose cones is made out of is just pretty weak. Uh, it's not like I'm nosing them into the ground, you know, just on, on standard belly landings. Uh, they, uh, the nose cones just flop off. Now, speaking of belly landings, on both of these models, I have taken the gear off 
Uh, on this one, I also took off the ventral fins, uh, which would normally be right here, uh, and put heavy duty uh, scotch packing tape on the bottom of the models to prevent the paint from getting all jacked up. Um, so now I just hand launch them and belly land them. Uh, I did try, uh, you know, lay, or uh, I did try using the uh, the landing gear uh, with the F-16. If it's a little windy out, uh, it will tip on the landing gear because the landing gear is very narrow. Um, so I recommend just hand launching it. Uh, it. You know, they're a lot more fun. You get a little more speed out of them, um, and uh, you know they belly land so easy that. Um, I, I just don't see the the purpose in having a landing gear after you've uh, done your maiden flight and you've worked out all the kinks and gotten it trimmed up. Now that brings me to another uh, area with the F-16. So you know, kind of the uh, you know, getting to the cons of the the F-16, and it's not really con. Huh? You know, I can't really say uh, that there are cons with either one of them. You know, because all of the things that, that are, you know, wrong, if you want to call it that, are, are easy to fix. Now, one of them that I've noticed, uh, more with the F-16 than the F-15, is that the magnets, the adhesive that they use to, to put the magnets for the, uh, the battery compartment, um, you know, so you've got two, two magnets right here, this, uh, these two magnets on the right and left, and these things just lift up and they don't stay adhered to the foam very well. Uh, you know, so I've tried gluing them down with, um, you know, with foam tack, with Gorilla Glue, Hot Glue, Super Glue, CA, doesn't matter. Uh, you know, they all, uh, it, it will end up lifting up eventually. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, and I've had all three of these lift up at some portion. So there's two magnets here on the side and another one up front. Uh, the same type of magnet is also what holds the nose cone on. And I've also had that one come off several times. Um, and, it, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but it's not, it's not terrible and it's not uh, hard to fix. So I kind of live with it. Um, you know, it certainly doesn't take away from the fun of the flying. Now, something else I've done in both the F-15 and the F-16 is I've removed the steering servo. So here is where the steering servo would be and the steering tiller would go in this little plastic piece and come out through uh, the bottom of the intake and your landing gear would be coming out here. I completely removed the landing gear assembly, all of the, the linkages and steering tiller and the steering servo, uh, which, uh, you know, gives me a little bit uh, less weight in the nose. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get a battery plugged in here so you guys can see uh, one of the other areas that I'm not 100% thrilled with. Now, with the F-16, uh, your battery compartment pretty much ends here. Uh, you know, so you've got just the way that it's molded, um, you know, the battery compartment kind of stops right here. So... You know, when I put the batteries in, I will normally put them in with the battery pushed up as far as I can get it on that foam block, you know, so getting it as far back as I can. All right, now I've got my, uh, my radio turned on here and set up for the F-16. So I'll go ahead and get this guy plugged in and let it get initialized. All right. All right, and all the control services have done their little dance, which lets us know that AS3X is initialized. So you kind of have to sit it, sit it flat uh, when you're first turning it on. Uh, let the control surfaces do their little dance so you know that AS3X is initialized and then you're good to go. Now, one of the things that you can see back here in the back is that the, the elevators uh, are, are in the up position quite a bit because what I found is either the model is very nose heavy or the, you know, the, you just have to have a lot of up elevator trimmed into this guy 
uh, to get it to fly right. Uh, now, you know, once that's done, uh, inverted flight is fantastic. Uh, you know, it, it flies great. It just needs a lot of up elevator uh, to maintain uh, straight and level flight, which isn't a big deal. Now, for uh, the control surfaces, I've got all the control surfaces set at the outermost holes on both the servo control rods and the control surface horns. Um, and that's what I'm looking at for 100% throws on the elevators. And that's what I'm looking at for 100% throws on the ailerons. And you, you know, it may not look like much, but it's all you need. Now, uh, the other thing that I have turned on here, and this is mainly for, uh, for when I hand launch the plane, I do have safe select turned safe on, select on. Uh, which will, you know, kind of uh, manipulate the, uh, the ailerons and the elevators to maintain level flight. Uh, and I will turn on uh, safe select for when I hand launch the plane. And then once the plane is in the air, I will switch off safe, safe select. Um, I will switch off safe select and fly at normal. Um, you know, just with AS3X turned on. Uh, speaking of AS3X, <laughs> rev it up there a little bit to kind of, uh, you know, energize the safe select. And uh, the safe select on this thing is fairly sensitive. It's not a super fast model. Uh, you know, and when you buy these things with the AR636 receiver in them, E-Flight uh, and, and the guys at Horizon do such a fantastic job of tuning these things that they're, um, you know, that they're well tuned uh, for even the, the fastest speeds that you'll get out of these things. You're not going to get a lot of oscillation or, or any for that matter. You're not going to get any porpoising out of these things at their, at their highest speeds. Uh, so the, the receivers are already tuned. They're good to go, and, and AS3X uh, stabilization on these little models uh, works wonders. Uh, it, it makes them super stable all the time. So, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, when I was mentioning how much up trim do you have to have in the elevator, uh, and, you know, you, again, you can see, I mean, I've got quite a bit of up elevator <laughs> tuned into these things where, uh, you know, that's just what you have to have for straight and level flight. Uh, I think if the battery were able to be sat back by maybe another inch, you know, that would change the CG enough, move the CG far enough aft where it would still, you know, be controllable. It wouldn't be super tail heavy. And, uh, you know, you wouldn't have to have so much up elevator trimmed into it. But, you know, given that the, uh, that the airplane is able to maintain uh, steady flight, both, uh, both inverted and normal, uh, you know, having that much up elevator trimmed into it, it doesn't really affect the flight of the model. It just looks a little weird to me. Um, you know, which, that's just my personal preference. <laughs> We'll go ahead and disconnect the battery from this guy, and uh, we'll bring out the the F-15. All right. So here we have the F-15. Now, very similar to the F-16. Uh, again, it's a three-channel uh, three model. Uh, let me go ahead and get the radio switched over to the F-15 so you guys can see what my throws look like. F-15. All right. So, with the F-15, it's still a, uh, a three-channel model. You've got your ailerons. Your throttle, your ailerons, and your elevator. Again, no rudders. Um, and same complaints uh, for the F-15 as, uh, you know, with the F-16. Um, you know, this one has, uh, 
has been through a little more than the F-16. There's been a couple of really windy days uh, before I decided to take a landing gear off where I was trying to take off with the landing gear. Uh, the plane got caught in a crosswind. It rolled it over, you know, and, and what I'll tell you is these little, um, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know what they're called, the little things on the top of the, um, of the vertical stabilizers, um, you know, probes, chair, let's call them probes. Uh, those guys are very fragile. Uh, you know, if you end up hitting the plane uh, on, uh, on those things, they will pop right off. Luckily enough, I was able to find them, uh, you know, dab a hot glue, got them right back on. Uh, but the same complaint with the nose, uh, the, the foam that the nose is made out of, if it's EPO, EPS, I'm not 100% sure. I would assume that it's EPO. But the tip of this nose, uh, it'll break off without even landing hard. Uh, you know, I mean, even if you just float it in, just that little bit of vibration, uh, you know, if it gets caught on a blade of grass, it's going to pop the nose off. Uh, and, and forget the pedo tube on the F-16. Um, you know, I lost that thing on the first flight and haven't seen it again. I'm sure it's embedded in the ground at CCRC somewhere. <laughs> um, the battery bay of the F-15 is configured a little different than the F-16. This one needs a lot more FCG uh, for it to fly straight. And you'll see that in a second when we, uh, when we put the battery in. Uh, the receiver is mounted all the way in the front instead of towards the back of the battery compartment. And you can see that, uh, you know, all the wiring and stuff for your, for your servos, I've just got running down the, uh, the bottom of the battery bay. And I slide the battery as far back as I can get it. Uh, in fact, I'll go ahead and get a battery in there now. Go ahead and plug it up and let it get initialized. All right, so the model's now initialized. So when I put the battery into the F-15, and this uses the same type of batteries as the F-16. These are 2200, um, milliamp hour, four cell batteries, 45C. So when you put this into the F-15, there's a little bump in there. And what I'll do is I'll slide it all the way back over that bump until the front of the battery is flush with the back of the, uh, the opening at the top of the battery cavity right here. So I'll go ahead and push that all the way back and then get my wires down in there. So once that's done, um, you know, what I found is that this thing, I, I have lost the canopy for this model. Here we go. <laughs> so what I found is that this thing CG is fantastic with the battery uh, right where I just showed you with the, the front of the battery flush with the, you know, the rear um, uh, cut out of the battery compartment right at the top. Um, now, if we look at how this is trimmed, right? So this is trimmed for flight right now. You can see that uh, I, I may actually have a little bit of down elevator um, trimmed into this guy, but it's nowhere near as drastic as the F-16. The F-15, um, you know, trims much easier. And the, uh, the ailerons, I don't believe I've got any trim in those at all. If I do, it's very little. Uh, this is a very stable model, uh, both at high speeds and low speeds. It's got a much wider speed envelope than the F-16 does. So you can take this thing as fast as it'll go. Again, the AS3X, um, you know, tuned from Horizon Hobby is fantastic. Um, you know, you can have this thing going at its, at its top speed, uh, high winds, low winds, no wind. Uh, it doesn't matter. This thing can handle anything. Um, and again, you don't get any kind of, uh, you don't get any kind of aileron oscillation. You know, it doesn't do any of this crazy stuff when it's flying. 
and it doesn't do any kind of porpoising with the elevator. The AS3X is spot on, uh, and this thing just feels locked in when you're flying it. Um, the uh, the control surfaces on this guy, you've got a little more throw, um, especially with the uh, you know with the ailerons. The ailerons are a little smaller. Uh, they don't span the full wing like they do on the F-16. So you've got a little more control surface movement. Uh, and again, with both the aileron and the elevator, I've got the, uh, both the control horn of the control surface and the servo horn set to the outermost holes. Um, and just, just linked in mechanically, you know, or centered up mechanically. So, and that's my, uh, my elevator movement. So you've got your, your uh, that's your 100% analog throws and 100% elevator throws. So now the AS3X is enabled. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but the, uh, the elevator and the, um, the aileron, uh, are moving in the right direction and again they are tuned and locked in uh, this thing is is beautiful right out of the box um, again I've got safe select um, you know which I have more for the uh, uh, the hand launching so I will you know kind of grab this thing by the bottom run the, run the throttle up and, and toss it, these batteries aren't, aren't charged. They just came out of the field. So, uh, you know, they are uh, a little weak right now. But the, uh, the Safe Select uh, makes it nice and simple. When you hand launch it, just launch it at about a 30 to 40 degree angle up in the air, set it to full throttle. You know, wait for the motor to spin up and start giving you a little bit of resistance. Give them a toss about 30 to 40 degrees up and just let them roll. Um, these guys are extremely easy to hand launch and extremely easy to fly once they're in the air. Um, like I was saying, the F-15, super, super wide um, flight envelope. In fact, one of the things that's, that's really neat about this one is, uh, you know, if you get it, you can get it pretty high up in the air and just kind of let it float back down. I mean, you can extend the crap out of your battery life. I think I've gotten like five and six minute flights out of this thing by just running it up to about 150, 200 feet and then just let it glide down. Um, and, and you can keep, you know, really high alpha flight uh, with the F-15 and, and still maintain, you know, some, some stable flight. Uh, same with the F-16. It, it has pretty good high alpha characteristics. Um, so the last thing I wanted to um, wanted to mention about these things is the pricing and availability, right? So both of these models are available from a number of different sources. You can get them from uh, directly from Horizon Hobby. Um, you know, there's a lot of local retailers. Uh, if you've got a local hobby store that carries Horizon Hobby products, uh, you're probably going to be able to get these there. Um, you can get them from uh, from Hobby Zone. Uh, you can find them on Amazon. You know, there's there's a ton of different places you can go where you can uh, where you can pick up these models. The plug and play versions of these models uh, normally retail for one fifty nine. If you're watching this video on the day that it was published, uh, which should be Sunday, December first, uh, I believe you're still going to be able to pick up the plug and play version of the F-16 for $129.99, uh, which is a pretty awesome deal. Now, you'll be able to get that at um, at most of your local retailers that honor Horizon Hobby's Black Friday sales. Uh, you can get that from horizonhobby.com. You can get it from hobbyzone.com uh, using, using Pilot Ryan's link, and I'll have those links in the description for you guys to be able to check out. Now, with that said, the normal price on these is $159.99 for the plug and play version. Now that does not come with the receiver. Uh, what I think is one of the the hottest deals on the planet is when, <laughs> and 
and, and I may get some backlash on this. You guys are certainly, uh, you know, let me know in the comments what you think. But uh, I think that being able to get an AR636 receiver, uh, AS3X receiver with safe select, already built in, already tuned by Horizon Hobby. These guys know what they're doing. They test these models, uh, you know, over and over and over again and put Lord knows how many flights on these guys uh, to make sure that the AS3X is tuned and tuned well. So when you get it, you can put it in the air and you're going to have a pleasant experience. Um, you know, I, I can't imagine... I don't know how they're selling it for, for $20 more. Uh, you know, so with that said, the normal price on these planes, $159.99 with, with no receiver. That's the plug and play version. The bind and fly version is $179.99. So for $20 more, you are getting an AR636 receiver. That AR636 receiver is normally 80 bucks by itself. And I buy them because they're awesome. They're great receivers. And you know, I won't even go into how much or or how complicated it is to program an AR636. They are not your normal gyro where you've got a few pots uh, to get your three axes set up, you know, set the games on your three axes and go. No, they are not that easy. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of of care that goes into the programming of an AR636. Um, you know, so for the layman, uh, like myself, or 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 even you, uh, depending on how experienced you are, or if you're even going to take the time out of your day to program an AR636 or any of the AS3X receivers that Horizon has or that they they sell under the Spectrum brand, um, you know, you understand how much of a pain in the butt that is. So for an eighty dollar receiver that's already programmed for you, and it only the the only upcharge is twenty bucks. And most of their, their bind and fly models are like this. You know, you have an upcharge of 20, 30, 40 bucks. That is smoking. That is awesome. So, you know, my recommendation, uh, unless you can get one of these things, uh, you know, at the Black Friday price, and, the, you know, this is specifically for the F-16 at the 129 price point, and just add your own receiver. If you want a gyro, fine, get one. If you don't, fine, don't get one. I would highly recommend doing a gyro in these little jets because they 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 are so small that they will get tossed around in the wind. Um, you know, so if you've got the uh, you know if you're going to get one, I'd get a gyro for it just to smooth out the flight characteristics in these tiny models, uh, and you're going to be a lot happier with it. Um, and that's it. Uh, let's go ahead and get to the flight videos. Uh, we're going to do, um, you know, back to back flight videos. Uh, the first one is going to be the F-16 and the second flight will be the F-15 and uh, then we'll wrap it up. I guess I'll just get my feet ready. Man. <laughs>
bird. The batteries only last like two minutes each, so. <laughs> Woo, I can't follow you doing all these loopy loops. This is hard. He's way up there. I want to put a GoPro on him because this gets really hard when you're trying to. Huh? Do you see that? Y'all can start my car too if you want to sit in it. I think these are actually, they came in a kit. And he put all the decal, but the Blue Ranger one, he's been working on that one forever. And he took a video of its maiden flight. It's on YouTube, I'll send you the link. My hand's shaking, Alan, you might have to take over for me in a second. Just like sit it down in the grass somewhere. Might get a little bit wet, but how excited was he when he first got them? Oh my gosh, he's like a kid in a candy store. You should see how many airplanes. I like getting on the um. The guy from Dogwood actually um, brought one with him. You should try it. So we're flying around Egypt. <laughs> Are they made here? Um, or is it just a girl? Oh, yeah, he does that a lot too. <laughs> Y'all, it's cold. I'm really tired. Oh, sorry that my hand is shaking. All right, guys, so that was the flight videos for the uh, the E-Flight uh, 64mm F-15 and 64mm F-16s. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, and I'll be sure to answer them for you. Uh, again, all of the uh, links are going to be in the description for both the airplanes, 
uh, uh, if you can get the plug and play version during the Black Friday sale, again, it's $129.99. That's just for the F16. The F15 is still $159. Um, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you hate the video, give it a thumbs down. I know I can be a little long-winded, but that's the beauty. Or maybe not. Anyway, um, thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Uh, check me out on Instagram. I have an Instagram account now. At, uh, it is the RC Air Marshal. And I also uh, just started up a Twitter account at the RC Air Marshal. Uh, we will have links to the description for the, uh, the Instagram and Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, you can find me on Facebook uh, at Dave Marshall. You can find me in the RC Pilots Lounge, several of the forums out there. Um, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you later.